I'm going to talk about the, the Nintendo Game Boy as a music instrument. First, I, I wanted to say a bit about my motivation for actually starting this whole making music on the Game Boy. I always loved the Game Boy. When I was a kid, I really wanted one. But in Denmark, they cost a thousand Danish crowns. And in 89, that's a lot of money. So I wasn't allowed by my parents. <laughs> So when I turned 18, I bought one. <laughs> and uh, now I have 20 or so. <laughs> I couldn't stop. <laughs> so give your children a Game Boy, because otherwise they'll turn out like me. <laughs> uh, also, I'm uh, not really a musician, but I really like this. I really like music, and I really like this kind of sound that uh, this chiptune music has. Um, probably because I grew up on computer games, on the Commodore 64 and Amiga and stuff like that. Um, so I wanted to make music on the Game Boy. Uh, I like hacking a bit and I read on the internet how to do it. And um, I wanted to show myself that I could do it. So at first it was just... Uh, it was just about showing to myself that I could make music on a Game Boy. It was my challenge to myself. Um, but um, there, there was uh, some things I needed to think about because I wasn't a musician really. I didn't really know anything about scales, still don't, uh, and harmonies and stuff like that. Um, so I wanted to find a niche where I could make music that people f thought was interesting because there's a lot of really, really good chiptune artists out there that knows a lot about how to create a really, really good melody. And I didn't. Uh, so I thought, well, I really like how this machine is a bit noisy and a bit awkward and not perfect. So I wanted to make really noisy, like noise industrial kind of music on the Game Boy. So that was also a bit of my challenge to try to make a genre of music on the Game Boy that people hadn't really done before because then I had uh, a possibility to get kind of sort of noticed in this vast amount of uh, good chiptune artists out there. And uh, I had some opportunities that a lot of people didn't have because uh, I've been a DJ for 15 years in the like bad cave, death rock, uh, goth rock scene. So I knew a lot of people around the world who set up festivals and uh, it, when they heard that I made music they didn't really care about the genre and then it just booked me. So I had a chance to go to Berlin and Lithuania and Copenhagen and uh, even a few times in Aarhus to play my music even though it didn't always fit the bill. <laughs> but uh, uh, this is a, a picture from Berlin at the Drop Dead Festival and um, uh, also, I had a, another um, issue that a lot of chiptune artists have, and that's how to create a like sort of a show when you're just you and a Game Boy. So I'm wearing a gas mask, and I have uh, a rotary a blue light, and sort of try to make a theme on the stage as well, because yeah, making a show is a bit hard with just a Game Boy, but I try. And people loved it, <laughs> so. Um, and uh, here's the real star. It's the Nintendo Game Boy. It was released in 89. Um, you probably all know that there's a lot of different models that came afterwards. There's the Pocket, uh, the Game Boy Color, and so later came the Game Boy Advance. And then they started a whole new line with the Nintendo DS, and that's really, that's really another kind of machine, really. But, um, uh, and then there's also a lot of different variations on these anyway. Uh, but when it comes to music, uh, this old one is by far the best. It has the most bassy sound and it uh, sounds just the way a Game Boy should. Uh, the Game Boy color is really, really weak, has no bass. Uh, and. Uh, the advance is maybe, some of the versions are okay and some of them are sounding a bit too clear. We want the ugly sound of the old one. 
Um, there's a lot of people that uh, do Game Boy mods, and some of them really make a lot of sense when you're working with the music on the Game Boy. Um, this was the Game Boy that, is, that I showed you before, and this is the one I actually use when I perform. There's a few extra switches on it, and uh, it's backlit. And that's really nice because there's not a lot of clubs where you can actually see this screen because you need sunlight. <laughs> so uh, that's, uh, that's probably the most important mod. There's another mod called the Pro Sound mod. Actually, I'll just show you here. I, I put another jack in it. And uh, the reason to do this is the, there's uh, an amplifier for the headphones. And it's this small, so not really good. So by passing around that, you get a little bit better sound that it works better for line out. Um, there's also some people that do more advanced modding on these uh, things. One of the things you can do is you can uh, make a MIDI interface for it, and then you can actually play it through a modern sequencer or uh, through the computer or use a, a synthesizer or something to control it. Um, but I like sticking to just the Game Boy. That's, that's the thing I like about it, so why not use that? Um, there's underclocking. You probably know, some of you, about overclocking on computers where you uh, ramp up the speed of the processor. Um, in uh, this case, we do the opposite sometimes. And that's because uh, often what you really want uh, when you make music is really good bass. And although the old one here is quite good at it, it's not uh, sometimes deep enough. So what you can do is you can underclock it, and then it actually uh, makes every sound deeper. So there's a, uh, there's a crystal in here that controls the speed of the CPU. And if you choose one that is exactly half the speed of that, uh, then you get one octave lower on every node. So that's just a way to get deeper sounds. Of course, you it cannot go as high as well. So if you really still want the high notes, then underclocking is not the way to go. And of course, there's a lot of people that like to modify the looks of their Game Boy. Uh, it doesn't come in that color, and it doesn't come with black buttons, but you can paint them, and you can do crazy stuff so it looks like your Game Boy and not everybody else's. Um, yeah. Um, now the interesting part of this is, uh, of course, the sound of the Game Boy. Uh, that's what I, I really like. And uh, it's due to uh, the chip in the Game Boy is prepared for making sound. Um, as far as I know, it's actually not a music chip inside it, but the processor has a music part of it anyway. But um, the important thing is that it has four channels, and it's one of the big limitations. You only have four channels, you can only play four sounds at a time. And uh, they're more restricted than just having the four channels, because the first channel can only make square wave. Only pulse wave, um, and uh, for for those that don't know, then square wave is a wave that goes like this, uh, and it has a certain char characteristic <coughs> when it <coughs> when it looks like that. Uh, you can uh, change the duty cycles, so you can change how long the tops are here. Um, but anyway, you cannot make other than square waves. Uh, the first channel has a frequency sweep unit that can make some, some uh, interesting sweeping sounds, um, which the other channels don't have. Uh, the second channel is just the square wave, same as the, as the first channel, but without the sweep frequency sweep. And um, the third channel is completely different. It can only make 4-bit waves. So you can actually play samples on it, but it's in four wave, four bit wave from a table. And um, the thing is that when you have sound, it's waves. And uh, 
When you have dig digital sound, then you cannot have a smooth wave. So you sort of make it up by, by squares, a bit like this. So you approximate uh, the wave uh, with these steps. Uh, four bits gives you 16 steps, 16 different levels the sound can be at, and that's it. Uh, that makes the sound of, uh, of these samples really gritty and ugly. Um, um, to compare, 16-bit, which is what we have on CDs, is uh, 65,636 steps. Uh, so you can have very, very smooth waves on a CD, compared to a Game Boy, anyway. <laughs> um, and uh, the fourth channel uh, is just white noise. You can only make white noise with it. Um, but as I might show you later, you can make a lot of things with white noise. Even though white noise is just this <laughs> sound that looks like this. Just random numbers and then you have a, you have a white noise. And uh, you can do panning. You can actually do stereo on the Game Boy. Uh, but it only has uh, three different, well actually four different uh, places you can place the sound. You can place it left, right, center, or nowhere. I don't know why they have the last one, other than they might use two bits for it. Um, but uh, yeah, left, right, or center. Um, the software I use for the Game Boy, and this is where it becomes a bit interesting. People always ask me, how do you make a sound on the Game Boy? Do you use the game, so what do you do? Well, I use software, uh, in my case, one called LSDJ, or Little Sound DJ. And it's uh, created by Johan from Sweden. Uh, it costs one cent, plus an optional donation. Um, and, uh, well, the, the software is, uh, well, almost free, but actually it's illegal to put it on your Game Boy because of... Uh, restrictions that uh, Nintendo put on to prevent uh, pirate piracy of games. But uh, <coughs> people do it anyway, and since it's a, it's a platform that Nintendo don't really support anymore, I don't think they really care that much. And they should be glad because we're just keeping the Game Boy alive this way. Um, there are alternatives, uh, like Nanoloop. Nanoloop actually makes the cartridges uh, and that way you could think that it's legal, because I cannot put games on this anyway. It's just a cartridge, but it's uh, made without license from Nintendo, so it's still illegal. But they make, it, make them in Germany anyway. Um, <coughs> yeah. LSDJ has some interesting features. Uh, it has uh, support for a keyboard mod. And I actually brought one. You can make a keyboard like this. And then you can plug it into a Game Boy uh, with this modified thing here. Uh, and then you can play it like a, like a synthesizer or keyboard uh, live. It was really fun building it, but I don't like using it. But it's, it's a cool thing to have. <laughs> Uh, you can sync them up using uh, a link cable, the standard link cable for Game Boys. Uh, so you can uh, have, instead of four channels, you can have eight channels. Uh, or even if you have a four-player pack, you can even do uh, 16 channels. Um, and why I don't use that, I'm going to tell you later. Uh, <coughs> it has an interface that's inspired by uh, trackers that are mostly known from Amigas. Um, and you'll see that later when I do a live demo. Um, and it has a really, really nice feature here that makes it possible to have five channels. And uh, you have this third channel that uh, has the wavetable. And what you can do in software is that you can mix two samples in into one new sample. 
and it can do this in software. So it uses the processor to mix these two together and then plays them through the third channel. And essentially, you have five channels. Um, and there's other tricks to make it sound like it has more channels, but they are more advanced. Um, then there's a software synthesizer that uses the wave, wave table for the third channel. Uh, so you can use, do some interesting things with this. And it, doesn't, it has some sample kits. So you, can, uh, you have some samples that are already put into the program. You can make your own samples and put them on there. A little bit uh, tricky to do, but you can do it. Uh, but it has some really, really cool ones. Uh, it has the TI-808 and TI-909, if anyone knows these. Uh, if you don't, then they are Roland uh, drum machines that are really legendary, especially in hip hop. And it has a really interesting sample kit from a speed synthesizer from 81, I think. Uh, so you can actually make synthetic speech and make, uh, make the Game Boy talk. Sounds uh, very much like a computer, but it talks. <laughs> and if you know what it's saying, you might understand it. <laughs> so um, I'm try I'll try to make a live demo, if I can make this work. OK, so uh, the first thing we can do is we can uh, make a, a sound in this uh, channel here. First, I put in a number, um, I have a, actually you can see down here is a map of the interface because you only have this small screen so you have to fit it all in there. So there's a map in the corner and you can uh, <coughs> navigate with your, with select and the D-pad on, on the controller, put in a, a, a new pattern and then we can uh, put in some notes and then we can play and that sounds not really interesting um, so let's stop that um, this is of course because uh, the instrument that we're using right now is not set up for anything it's just uh, a pulse that's set to unlimited so what I what I do is um, I set the, the envelope for this. Actually, I should uh, do this with sound on. I can set the envelope. I can turn the sound up and down here, and then I can make it shorter, like this. I can change the characteristics of it here. make it sound like I I want it to and um, now we have uh, some kind of bass sound not really sounding that good but anyways uh, we can then make a new in our other channel here and uh, a new pattern and then we put in some notes here Uh, let's do oh. and as I'm not really good at uh, this thing about uh, melodies I'm actually using one from an, a tutorial made by Saber Pulse he's a legend so why not uh, why not use his expertise? I don't know if he's proud of this one, but uh, anyways. <laughs> so we have some sort of melody and we can again uh, change the characteristics of the sound. And uh, make it sound interesting. And uh, when we've done this, we can play them together. 
Uh, and if we uh, go to the wave channel, make a new pattern, uh, then we can change the instrument here to a new one. Uh, this instrument will change to a kit. And uh, here we set it for the TI-909, just because it has a nice sound. Uh, and uh, now we can build up a, a drum pattern of some kind. And uh, let's put some uh, And uh, now we can play all these together. And now we've made music on the Game Boy. Thank you.